OK, so what we have is x plus 4 divided by x squared minus 4 minus 15 times x minus 2. Now, before we start looking at this and saying this LCM is going to be too difficult to find, let's go ahead and simplify this if possible. So a lot, of, a lot of times, I just like to write the LCM to the side. Now I need to simplify this. So therefore, we want to see, can we factor it out? Or is there anything else we can you know, divide into 1? Over here, I look, I have x plus 4. I can't really do anything with that. Here, I have x squared minus 4. And whenever I see an x squared and with two terms, I'm always thinking difference of two squares. For it to be difference of two squares, I have to have the difference of the two values. And I also have to have my 4 be a square number, which in this case it is. So therefore, I can simplify this to x plus 4. And the difference of two squares of x, x squared minus 4 is going to be x plus 2 times x minus 2. Now, over here, I can't simply do anything. All right, But when we're looking at our LCM, we notice that they both share an x minus 2. The only difference is this term has an x plus 2. So therefore, my LCM is going to be x minus 2 times x plus 2. So therefore, to get common denominators, I'm just going to have to multiply. Since this already has the LCM, I'm just going to have to multiply this fraction by x plus 2 in the denominator and in the numerator. Now, we notice that these are binomials that are going to be a part of this. So therefore, when I simplify this, I need to make sure that I apply distributive property. right? When I combine these, I need to make sure I apply my distributive property. All right, so therefore, I'm going to have an x plus 4 minus, now I'm going to keep this, I'm going to put this in parentheses to make sure that, again, I follow this rule. So it's minus everything up here, which is an expression of 15x plus 30. Right? You're subtracting the whole term, not just the 15. You're subtracting the whole term. Or you could say minus 15 and then multiply it out, but we'll get to that. So therefore, now my LCM is x plus 2 times x minus 2. Now I can apply distributive property again with the, my negative sign. So therefore, I'll have x plus 4 minus 15x minus 30 all over x plus 2 times x minus 2. All right. Well, now you see that everything's written up there. Now I can combine my terms. So x minus 15x is going to be a negative 14x. And positive 4 minus 30 is going to be a negative 26 all over x plus 2 times x minus 2. Now, again, you see that we can still simplify this. We can divide out common terms in our numerator. And what I like to factor out is I can factor out a negative 2. So if I factor out a negative 2, I'd be left with a positive 7x plus 13 divided by x plus 2 times x minus 2. Now again, I want to see what values are going to make my denominator equal to 0. Those are going to be my restrictions, right? Now I could set these both equal to 0, but I, I know by applying the zero product property that my x cannot equal 2 or negative 2. Because if it equals 2 here, I get 0. 0 times anything is going to be 0. If it equals negative 2 here, I'll have 0. 0 times anything is going to be 0. So my two values that x cannot be are going to be 2 and negative 2. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is your simplified final answer. Thanks.